Hey, you want to see something really cool? All my axes, 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 all home themselves now. Z? X? Y? And it backs off. Pretty cool. Not to mention I've got a new old guy woodwork shirt. Let's watch and see how we did this. Okay, the problem is when you need reading glasses, you need reading glasses to see which reading glasses you have, because I got 2.0s and 1.5s. And these are the ones that I want to wear. Let's check out what I've got wired up over here. So I've got seven switches, but I only have five inputs on my breakout board, and one of them's already on the emergency stop. So that kind of creates a problem. You can take your hard limits, whether they're negative or positive, and run them all in series. And if your axis hits that switch, no matter what direction it's going, it's gonna shut it down. Problem being, if you hit a negative limit switch, you can only come positive back. Or if you have a positive switch, you can only come negative back. So if they're all running series, they have to either be a negative or a positive. So rather than do that, I wanted to make all my hard limits their own dedicated input signal so I could move it back and it's better functionally that way. So I've got the two down here that are my X positive and they're running series and that's okay. That'll all be on one input. This here is my Y positive. This up here is my Z positive and it's also my homing switch. That over there is my Y negative and homing switch. And then on this end, here at the end of this rail, I've got my A negative and homing switch, which is slave to the X negative and X homing switch over there. So when X is told to go home, or that motor over there is told to go home, it will stop when it hits its limit switch, but the A will still keep going until it hits its limit switch. That way it'll square up this gantry and that's going to work real nice for me because I get this thing out of square every once in a while when I hit something. And it's vice versa as well. It'll hit the A, then hit the home, then it squares it up and it moves it back to jog position of just a little. So I've got my new breakout board coming so I can take advantage of additional ports. So I'll be able to use port one and port two and that'll give me up to like 34 more at our total uh, input signals which will be nice for in the future. This is the limit switch or micro switch that I used. There's no markings on here that tells you what's normally closed and norm normally open. But I know when I connect this post and this post, that makes for a normally closed circuit. So I just put five volts to either this one or that one. And then this runs back to the pin configuration on the breakout board and that completed the circuit. When this is activated, that opens the circuit and then sends a message back to the software. So I started this process by determining if this connection here was actually normally closed. The print's really hard to see on these micro switches, so I wanted to be sure. So I just basically started my Y over, pull it, Okay, so I know when that's off, this is an open circuit. And you want to keep these, you really want to run them in a normally closed position because if the circuit opens up for some other reason, you have to depend on this to open it and it's already open, that means that this micro switch isn't going to stop this. While I was waiting for the breakout board to show up, I went ahead and wired up my switches and you can see this is the A positive limit switch which runs in series with the X positive here on the other side. These a little shrink wrap and, and everything nice and neat. And then put some loom on it to protect it from damage and to make it look somewhat nice. So in here, the wires come in through the back of the controller box. And I also installed this power block. 
And there's a new breakout board. And it's all inside this new controller box, which is a different video altogether, which you should watch and see how I put everything together inside here. Each limit switch gets their five volt source from this power block right here. And each limit switch wires back into these pins on this breakout board. So when there's power to the breakout board, five volts goes to each switch. And since we have a normally closed circuit, all the LEDs come on to each pin. And when they're tripped, you see the light go off. That sends an activation signal to the software program in Mach 4. So I created a cheat sheet on the bottom of the controller box that identified which each pin configuration was on the breakout board. Then I used this to configure Mach 4. I've got Mach 4 running here on my computer. And I'm going to go to the configuration tab to my plugin. Remember, I use the ESS or the smooth stepper from Warp 9. And I go to my pin labeling. And you can see how I've labeled each one of my pins. I give them all different names so it's easier to remember and it's easily identifiable in this configuration. Here I've labeled all my motors. And you'll see there that I've labeled my E stop is port 1 pin 10 and then all my home and negative limits and here are my new ones on the port 2 pin 2 and pin 1 that's my X positive and Y positive and then on my input signals motor 0 is my X Y is on number 1 and 2 is my Z and that's not enabled here you'll see my negative limits are here and each one's enabled as well except for my Z and then here they're all set as homes and you notice it says Z home that's actually supposed to be positive now that everything is labeled properly you have to configure mock for your homing switches here you see that motor 3 is my A and it's slaved to motor 0 which is X then you just go into the homing limits setup and you see that Z goes first and then X goes second and Y goes third. You can set this up however you want it to work for you. So as you can see here I made this little mount that's adjustable to slide back and forth so I can fine tune my zero wherever I want it. You see here that it moves right on across and it comes over. If you're manually doing it, it locked it out because this is my Y minus switch and so it hit the minus limit, shut it off. But it will allow me to move back in the positive direction. Now if I go ahead and hit reference all home axes, comes back, hits the switch, and then backs right off, giving me a little space here, and zeroes out. Now my favorite thing to do, because this will get out of square sometimes, once I enable it, I like to reference all axes to go home, and it puts everything in its zero spot. So let's see if this works. And when mine goes to home, It goes real slow. But we'll speed it up. So when it gets to X at the end, it's going to square itself up between the X and the A. And then it's going to come across to the Y Set. Now it's coming over on the Y, hits, and backs it off. We are now all 
completely referenced. And we are at machine zero. So before I actually run the gantry back and forth and all around, I'm just gonna do a simple test and hit this switch right here. And it should change. It just said X positive limit switch is triggered. That's a good sign. So let's see if this thing actually works before it actually gets here. I'm liking that. So this project's done. Just as a reminder, this is good for a Mach 4 setup, which we did in the software. It homes really well, everything works, limit switches work. Sometimes the homing doesn't work like I want it, and that's because there's like electrical interference between the wires. And what I have to do when that happens is I just turn off the limit switches for the homing axes, and then I home it, go back in, turn the limits on, turn the homing off, and everything works fine. In the future, to alleviate that problem, the wire that I've run needs to be shielded rather than just this two wire without shielding. And then also on the homing switches here, I can add another, and I probably will do this in the future, with a proximity switch that allows a little bit of a gap. And that's gonna be a future video, and then we'll have two switches on all the homing axes, axes and uh, that'll be a nice improvement. That's gonna be in the future. So, uh, get a chance, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next project.